Hey there, this is Kat at Magoosh. I'm the ACT expert, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about what is on the ACT math section in the 2018-2019 test cycle. So we've been looking at most recent exams and studying some trends, studying frequency of, of question types, and I have some really interesting findings to share with you, but more importantly, I wanna give you some tips that will help you get those questions right. One really interesting thing about the 2018-2019 exams, or at least the ones in the last couple of years, and we predict to see this continue to happen, is that questions on averages come up quite a bit. So when I say averages, what I'm talking about specifically are the mean, median, and mode. And I know a lot of you have seen this, maybe it's been a while since you have seen this, but these are really great things to learn before the exam because if you can remember which of these terms means what type of average, that's gonna make such a difference. We have found these problems sometimes to come up as frequently as four times on a single exam. So that's a lot. It might not sound like a lot, but that's like one of the most frequently occurring type of questions. So let's go over really quickly. what is the difference. So a mean is basically just the average. This is when you add everything up and you divide that sum by the number of items. Okay, and so I kind of remember it that, you know, mean, maybe this isn't the best way to remember it, but that mean is kind of like, it takes you a long time. It's kind of like the mean type of average, like a little, it gets cranky because you have to slow down when you have to calculate the mean, right? And sometimes when we use the word average, we really are just talking about the mean. So if you don't know anything else about the scenario, someone says calculate the average, they mean to calculate the mean, all right? So that's the mathematical one. The median just means the centermost number. And I'm gonna show you an example of this in just a second, all right, but it's, this, it's the middle. And you can see that, of course, or media, if you speak Spanish, the, the middle part of, of the range of numbers. And then last, we have the mode. The mode is the most frequently occurring number. Now, sometimes you have more than one mode because you might have a number that occurs the same number of times as some other number, all right? But in that case, you would just have more than one mode. So I know this is just kind of a lot of words. Let's go through it with an example using real numbers. Let's pretend you have this set. You've got an eight, two, one, two, five, and you're asked to calculate the mean, median, and mode. Now on the ACT exam, it's probably not gonna be quite as straightforward as that, but this is just for review, right? So this is your number set. The first thing you're always gonna do is put them in order from lowest to highest number. And you can see we have two twos up here, so I actually write out the two twice. Now, the mean is gonna be adding all of this together and then dividing by, we've got five digits, by five. And I did that ahead of time, thought it through, and the mean is 3.6 in this example. Okay, so that's just the average. What is the median? Well, it's right in the middle, it's a two. And then what is the mode? The mode here is the most frequently occurring, it's also a two. If there was another five right here, we would have two modes. We would have two and five as being our mode, okay? So that's an important thing to review, and of course you want to use um, more examples, you wanna practice with, with questions that are a little bit more complicated just to make sure you really can apply these concepts to questions about averages. Another really interesting thing we found is that there's this trend toward word problems and also geometry and sometimes the combination of the two, geometry, word problems. And they show up a lot more than students are often prepared to see. Sometimes um, like 20% geometry, 40% word problems or more. And what's interesting is that a lot of students actually lack sufficient practice in these areas. In American high schools, there's a movement towards algebra, more algebra, harder algebra, earlier on in high school and middle school. And what other studies have found, and I've seen this in lots of different reports, is that American high schoolers are getting better at algebra, but to the detriment of other things, to the detriment of pre-algebra, to the detriment of geometry, right? So one thing in particular I'd really like you to get practice on is what are called geometric diagram problems. So that's a problem where maybe they're giving you this word problem and they're saying like, 
the Rodriguez family is going to landscape their backyard. And um, it's a 10 by 12 backyard, and they want to put a goldfish pond right in the middle. And then they'll ask you something about maybe calculating the area of the goldfish pond based on a couple other variables you're given, right? Or they might even ask you how much soil are they going to need to buy if they have to fill this, you know, planters around the goldfish pond or something like that, right? So anyway, that's an example. A lot of students get a bit overwhelmed because you're never totally sure what's going to come up on these geometric practice problems. So the solution to that, okay, and the way to bridge this gap we're seeing between what our American high school is prepared for and what is the ACT testing you on, of course, is going to be more practice. And I've put together a couple practice problems that you can check out. So just look at the link in the description below and um, try and do those practice problems and even more importantly, read the explanations so that you know how to approach problems like this. The third tip I have for you, and this might sound kind of like not a very interesting tip, kind of generic, but it's so important because this makes all the difference for students, is that when you're doing practice math problems and you find one of those problems you just don't quite understand, figure out how to understand it, okay? So a lot of students, they'll do that, they'll look at the answers and they'll say, oh, I can see why I got that one wrong, I just switched a negative sign or something like that. But then those really hard questions come up and Maybe the explanation doesn't even totally make sense to you. What do most students do in that situation? They say, well, that won't really come up on the actual exam. Or they'll say, well, that's hard. I mean, I, I don't really need to know that anyway. But that makes all the difference. And we've seen this. Other tutors say the same thing. My colleagues at Magoosh also agree. This is a really, really good habit to get into. So if you come across one of those explanations and you just don't understand where you went wrong, why you didn't get the answer, find help. You can try and ask a student you know who's really good at math. Um, maybe your math teacher, maybe your school has some after hours tutoring service or something like that. Make sure you get answers to those problems that most students are just going to shrug off, but you are going to know how to do them. So that's it for today. These are the most important skills and um, areas that I think you need to know going into the 2018-2019 cycle. And if you like this video, hit like. You can subscribe to this channel to get more tips, and I'll see you next time.